Hess's law says that if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, the delta H for the overall reaction is the sum of the delta H's for all of those individual reactions. And this can be done for any set of equations that can be rearranged and added together to give an overall equation, but it's especially useful for calculating the enthalpy change for a reaction from a set of enthalpies of formation, where the enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy for making one mole of a single product from its constituent elements. So there are a couple of different ways to use Hess's law. The first way is to do a rearrange and add kind of method, where you rearrange and add a bunch of different individual equations together to get an overall equation. And the second method is a summation method, which we'll talk about later. So our first example is going to involve the reaction of SiCl4 with H2O to produce SiO2 and HCl. And we're going to be looking for the overall delta H for that reaction. In order to do this Hess's Law calculation, what we'll need are a couple of equations that we can rearrange and add together. So what we'll do is we'll look at delta H formation equations where we look at all of the individual components of that overall equation, SiCl4, H2O, SiO2, and HCl, and we'll have equations to make each of those individual components from their constituent elements. SiCl4 can be made from chlorine gas and silicon, and if you set up that equation, it has a delta H formation for making one mole of SiCl4, and that delta H value is negative 640.1 kilojoules per mole. Similar equations can be written for making H2O, and for making SiO2, and for making HCl gas. Now that we've got all of our equations written, we have to decide how to rearrange them so that we can add them together to get to our overall equation. And the way we do that is we look at the overall equation first and we say for each of those components, where does that component show up in the individual equations? So for example, SiCl4 is in our overall equation and it's also in equation number one. And we have to decide how to rearrange that individual equation so that eventually when we add them all together, SiCl4 ends up in the correct location and in the correct amounts. So now that we've got some numbered equations, what we have to do is decide how to rearrange them to best suit our purposes, which is adding them together to get the overall equation. SiCl4 in the overall equation shows up as a reactant, and there is one of them. And we have one SiCl4 in our individual equation, but it's a product, so we have to reverse that reaction. And that means reversing the delta H as well. If we look at our second equation, we look at water. In our overall reaction, we have two waters on the reactant side, and on our individual equation, we have one water on the product side. So we have to reverse that reaction to get it in the right place, and we have to double it to get the right amount, which means we have to in reverse, so make positive our delta H, and we need to double it as well. So we have to reverse and double that equation. When we look at our third equation, we look for SiO2. In our individual equation, it shows up as a product, and in our overall equation, it shows up as a product. And in both cases, there's only one mole of them. So we just leave that one alone. Then we look at our fourth equation for the HCl. It's a product, and in our overall equation, it's a product as well. But there are four in our overall equation and only one in our individual. So what we have to do is quadruple equation number four. We have to multiply it all by four. Now that we've rewritten our equations and adjusted our delta H values as appropriate, we can begin to add together all of the individual equations. 
And what we do is we look at the left-hand side of the reaction arrows for each individual equation, and we add all of those components together. And then we look at the right-hand side of the reaction arrow, and we add all of those components together on the right-hand side of the overall reaction arrow. Once we've added all our components together, now we have to simplify the equation. And that involves crossing out anything that shows up on both sides. Oxygen and hydrogen show up on both sides, silicon shows up on both sides, and chlorine shows up on both sides. So we cancel those out, and then we write whatever's left over. And that happens to be the SiCl4, two waters, going to SiO2 and 4HCl, which is exactly what you'd expect for the overall reaction. Then we add together all of the adjusted delta H's, and we end up with a value of delta H for the whole reaction of negative 68.3 kilojoules. And we'll write that value down up at the top, because when we do our second calculation type, which is the products minus reactants method, we'll find that we get exactly the same answer. The second method we use for calculating a delta H using Hess's law is the products minus reactants method, where we still again use the delta H formation values for each of those individual components of the overall reaction. This is the summation method, where the overall reaction's delta H is equal to the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients times the delta H's for the products, minus the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients times the delta H for the reactants. And what we do is we say the four for the HCl coefficient times the delta H for HCl plus the 1 coefficient for the SiO2 times the SiO2 delta H minus the equivalent summation for the reactants. So we've given you a table on the left hand side which has the delta H values for the individual components but if you're doing an assignment or other practice problems you can find these tabulated values in the back of the textbook. What we'll do is we'll say the delta H for the overall reaction is equal to 4 from the stoichiometric coefficient of HCl times minus 92.3 kilojoules per mole, which is the delta H formation for HCl. And then we have 1 SiO2 times negative 910.9 kilojoules per mole, and that is the first summation term. We'll subtract the summation term for this reactants. So we have 1. SiCl4 and its delta HF is negative 640.1 kilojoules per mole. And then we have two H2Os and its value for delta HF is negative 285.83 kilojoules per mole. 
And when you do all of your additions and multiplications, and you get an overall value for delta H reaction, hopefully it should work out to be the same as we calculated with the first method, which is minus 68.3 kilojoules. And in this case, all those kilojoules per mole, the per moles canceled because we used the stoichiometric coefficients. And those are representative of numbers of moles. And then again, in the end, your final delta H value is negative 68.3.